John Gesser, the son-in-law of Red Dunn, the Packer quarterback from back in the 20s and 30s. John, how are you, sir? And what can you tell us about your father-in-law from back in the day? I'm good. However, uh, Red Dunn wasn't in our life very long, unfortunately. He died at a very early age of 53 or 54, and that was right uh, in within a year or so after I married his daughter ah. and had our first child. So uh, Red was, he a lot of stories about Red and this, uh, that related back to his daughter Patty, uh, old boyfriends. Ah, okay. Some of the, the one story they would, uh, there was one guy that I went to school with that, that I didn't know, Patty at the time, dated with Patty but he was kind of a small guy. So the Duns had a lot of fun on uh, putting a large item uh, and say, give us a hand here, want to move it? Yeah. Well, the guy couldn't move it by himself. Yeah. So that was a great, uh, well, he was a weakling or something, and then it's a good story to continue on with uh, some of his Shenanigans. <laughs> Shenanigans. And there, and there were a lot of a lot of those in Red Dunn's history. Yeah. And that's the way the the, uh, the Irish kind of live. Oh yeah. Tricking other people and they're trying to do things that they that they know they couldn't do. Having a good time. Good time. At others' expense, maybe sometimes, huh? I, I learned not to wear my letter sweater from high school into the house because he would f take a look at it and. Uh, <laughs> you take a look at it, and then before I take Patty out, he'd say, "You better button that up. You're gonna get cold out there." <laughs> Something like that would. <laughs> Always a little advice. A little huh? advice. Yeah. And a little chuckle. Yeah. Well, you know, it's amazing because after Curly Lambeau, he is the quarterback in Pack early Packer history. That's right. Did you have a feeling for that when you were first getting involved with the family? How great he was. Yes, sure. Everybody said, hi, Red, and Red would return, uh, hi, Bud. Call everybody Bud because he couldn't remember the names. All right. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, I swore that he was going to call me Bud on a, when he offered his daughter. To <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, he was something else, just a great player. Uh, also a Marquette boy, right? Right. Went to Marquette. Did he play all, quarterback at Marquette, too? Yes, All-American. A lot of memorabilia there that uh, points that out. Okay, when, wow. When talk about red, the flash. The flash? Especially on the on the basketball floor. Apparently he was quite a dribbler and, and could handle the ball and bring it up and then passed off to the to the scorers. Oh, so kind of like the point guard. So point guard. Yeah. And that, that's pointed out in a lot of the articles that, he, that I've read. So he played at Marquette basketball and sure. football. Was he in track too or any other sport? Not the, the, that I was aware of or anything like that. Okay. But I think uh, during those seasons he was off playing semi-pro ball. A lot of the guys at, at, at uh, the college apparently, from what I hear, would uh, make some money outside with a taking a different name. Sure, yeah. And... Uh, they would play semi-pro ball and get paid for it. Some of the, uh, the stories are at the upstairs of the barns had big second floor areas that they play basketball in. Yeah. And the local crowd would be over and drinking and, and playing. Having a good old time. time. Yeah. Uh, if you had to say one thing about Red Dunn's football career to somebody that didn't know anything about him, what would you say? I'd probably uh, tell a couple stories. One is uh, the uh, the game at Marquette against uh, um, <laughs> Eastern School. Uh, no, drawing a blank. The uh, uh, Boston College. Okay, another Jesuit school. Another Jesuit school. Right. There's an article in uh, the coaches from the 20s and the 30s that referred to this game, because, uh, highlighting the coach's history. And I don't remember the coach's name, but uh, it's in the, one of my copies of the article where Red Dunn was uh, 
broke his arm one of the first plays of the game, and he played the rest of the game, and they won seven to six, and he kicked the extra point to win the game. <laughs> so, now I. Now did he break his throwing arm? Well, I doubt if it was a, a throwing arm. Yeah, holy mackerel! But, uh, there's a famous sports writer and poet that wrote for the uh, New York papers, Grantland Rice. Oh, sure. That uh, wrote an article which I read, but I we do not have copies of in our memorabilia. I'll have to dig that out somehow uh, to it's find. It's probably it. available someplace. Yeah. But with his arm dangling on the side. <laughs> Kick the extra point to win the game, etc., etc. It was and uh, so he was quite the coward star. Ever, you know, way before the Marquette days, right? Right. Yeah. 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 Wow. How about a Marquette or a a Packer memory or something you would tell somebody if they said, "Who was this guy?" Well, uh, Johnny Blood was was uh, one of one of his receivers and also running backs. And uh, he tells the story that uh, Red tells about it is that uh, he would throw the ball to Johnny Blood, and who scored a lot for for uh, the Green Bay Packers. And uh, he apparently, after one of his nights out a little bit, he was uh, getting a little tired of his throwing the ball <laughs> and running. And uh, he told Red, "You throw me that ball one more time, I want to throw it right back at you." And he did. Right in the game. <laughs> right in the game. <laughs> so that, that uh, rendition is also in that book. All right. So in our books, so I can read about it. Excellent. All right.